Uh, hello, folks, and welcome to this uh, session on building intelligent applications with .NET and Azure. My name is Luis Quintanilla, and I'm a program manager here at Microsoft working at the intersection of AI and .NET. And with me today is David Pine. David, would you like to introduce yourself? Of course. Thank you, Luis. Uh, I'm David Pine. Uh, I'm a senior content developer working in .NET and Azure, and I'm happy to be here. Awesome. All right. So before we get started, uh, we'll just uh, walk through the agenda and some of the things that we'll be talking to you about today. So we'll start off first by introducing intelligent applications, tell you a little bit about uh, sort of what they are, now show a few examples of them out in the real world, and also talks to you a little bit about the different types of uh, tasks that you can perform using AI and how you can use those tasks to then build these intelligent applications. We'll start off by introducing intelligent applications. We'll talk about what they are, show a few examples, and discuss the different types of tasks that you can use AI for to build your intelligent applications. David's then going to walk us through a demo that shows an intelligent application built with .NET, and we'll then use the rest of the time to take a look at the code powering the application. Let's get started. So what are intelligent apps? Intelligent apps are AI-powered applications that transform users' productivity, they automate processes, and they derive insights using the tools and platforms that they know and love. In this talk, I'll show you how you can enhance your .NET applications by leveraging Azure OpenAI service to build intelligent apps to meet your business and customer needs in C-sharp using tools like Visual Studio and platforms like Azure that you know, love, and are already productive in. So, that seems a little bit abstract, so let's make it a bit more real. Uh, here's a few examples of real-world intelligent applications today that are transforming productivity, they're automating processes, and they're deriving insights. So on the left-hand side here, we have Bing Chat, which is an AI-powered uh, chat interface for Bing. And basically, you can ask it complex questions, and you get comprehensive answers and, and summarize information. So in this example, I asked Bing for suggestions for a three-course menu with chocolate dessert. Uh, now, from there, Bing uses AI to take my question, it queries through its massive index of web pages to identify content that's relevant to my question. Uh, and then it uses AI to extract and summarize key information uh, from those documents. Uh, once it has those documents, it just takes that information and it generates a response, which is the one that you see here. Uh, so one thing that you'll notice is that the answer contains citations, uh, which you can look at for more details. Um, and basically those help you build more confidence in the responses that are uh, generated. So I could have done all this myself, but it would have taken a significantly long, uh, long time, basically because I would have had to perform searches myself, uh, filter through the information to find the right content. So by using AI, I was, I was basically able to automate the process and uh, it saved me a lot of time. So the example on the right shows uh, something very similar. Uh, what you're seeing is GitHub Copilot in Visual Studio. Uh, which you're probably already using today. And uh, as, as you may know, uh, Copilot, what it does is it allows you to uh, get code suggestions to help you be more productive when you're writing code. Now that you've seen examples of intelligent applications and the type of tasks that you can perform with AI, let's, let's take a look at a few of them. So there's a large number of tasks that you can perform uh, using AI, such as classifying text, translating text, uh, generating code, generating images, um, but there's a few that I want to focus on for the relevance in, in boosting productivity uh, in the enterprise. And those are deriving key insights and summarizing information. On the left-hand side, you can see there's a long-form text about pottery. Uh, now, using AI, I was able to extract the keywords within the text, which I could use for quicker retrieval and discovery of this information later on. So that's the part that you see highlighted in green. Uh, similarly, on the right, you can see that there's a long paragraph about neutron stars. And although there's a lot of really great information there, I just want to know the main idea. And again, uh, to help me with this, I used AI to distill the information into uh, a single sentence. So imagine now how introducing these types of capabilities uh, to your applications could transform your productivity and that of your business. In a moment, I'm going to hand it off to David so that he can show you what an intelligent application built with .NET and Azure might look like. But before David sort of uh, kicks off the demo, I'm just going to kind of set the stage here. Imagine that you have an internal knowledge base for your employees, which contains information about things like job roles, um, healthcare plans, and other business documents. And now your users may be able to use this knowledge base for finding the right documents and sort of for finding information. Um, however, that can be a little bit of uh, time consuming. So what if you could use AI to improve your employees' productivity by surfacing the right information at the right time 
And so that's kind of what you're going to be seeing here with the demo that David's going to show you. So with that, David, I'll let you take it away. Awesome. Thank you so much, Luis. So I'm thrilled to share a brief overview of the app in question. Uh, it's built using ASP.NET Core minimal API for the back end and Blazor WebAssembly for the front end. We're leveraging Mudblazor, which is an open source Blazor component library. And on the landing page here, when you arrive, um, you see a feature set uh, of unique images running through a carousel. And these have never uh, before seen artwork that's generated entirely from prompts uh, by Bing Create, powered by Dolly. There's various links for GitHub repos, docs, and the Azure AI, OpenAI NuGet package, as well as links to various open source projects. So from there, let's open up the menu and dive into voice chat. So I put together a little fun part before we get into the enterprise focused. Um, so this is like the non-enterprise primer. Um, so meet Blazor Clippy. Uh, so what I've done was I've instructed for our session on this page for our AI model to take on the persona of Blazor Clippy, a friendly companion who can help you up-level your skills with Blazor. So you can use your microphone and you can ask questions. So I'll say, could you please help me understand bi-directional JavaScript and Blazor interop? You can see it picked up the text there and we'll send this off. So it's going to answer this. And as the answer comes through, it's actually going to be leveraging the Azure AI, OpenAI NuGet package. And it's going to leverage the streaming APIs. So once the response is ready, it's going to buffer the response into our client side experience. So it's going to emulate as though it's typing back to you and giving you that, you know, kind of engaging response. So you can see here, we have our answer. This looks beautiful and styled as we'd expect. Uh, so now let's go change gears a little bit and get into more of the mindset of the enterprise. So as Luis shared, I want you to imagine that I'm an employee who is looking for information about my health plan. So we've ingested all sorts of HR documents uh, PDFs into blob storage. We've indexed over those so that we can quickly search for relevant content. So we have some questions here that are example questions. Otherwise, you could use your voice and ask your own questions or type manually and ask questions however you see fit. So let's just choose this one here. And as it's retrieving the response, this is leveraging retrieval augmented generation. And we expose various programmatic approaches to leveraging these various skills. So as you can see here, it has an answer that has inline citations. It has the thought process and additional supporting content. Um, but that's great. So let's take that a step further because uh, this is only for like single questions. Let's go into a full blown chat experience. So when we enter chat, it's much the same way. We've got the same questions here, or we can ask anything we want. And this time, we'll ask uh, the same question, but the response will be slightly different in that it's going to provide not only um, our uh, you know, conversational context and uh, citations and things of that nature, but it's going to add follow-up questions. So we can click on a follow-up question and the further you ask, the, the further you get into asking these sorts of questions, uh, the more the thought process will evolve. And with that, um, the dialogue, the, the whole experience, the history and everything within your chat uh, is all in the app here. It's not persisted, uh, but it's leveraging our own data and feeding that into OpenAI to empower us to you know, provide a, a rich user experience. So with that, I'm going to throw it back to Luis and we can kind of talk more about the code. All right. Well, thank you for that great demo, David. Uh, first off, let's take a look at the technologies that are powering this application. For the front end, we're using a static web app built with Blazor WebAssembly. Uh, this is the UI that takes the user queries. Uh, requests from the UI are handled by a minimal ASP.NET Core web API. And this is what orchestrates the interactions with uh, the rest of the services. Uh, the backend also uses Semantic Kernel uh, to orchestrate some of the AI workflows. And the AI components that are used for intelligence are powered by Azure OpenAI service. Uh, 
Uh, finally, the storage layers and search capabilities of the application uh, are powered by Azure Cognitive Search, Azure Storage, and Azure Redis Cache. So now that you have a sense of the pieces that make up this application, let's take a look in more detail at how you might go about building your own. At a high level, we're gonna break it down to the main points or break down the main points into roughly three parts. Uh, first, you're gonna need a knowledge base and chances are that you already have this. Um, you're also gonna need the ability to query that knowledge base for relevant information pertaining to your query or request. And then last but not least, you're gonna need to use AI to summarize relevant information and extract key insights from that knowledge base to generate a response. So let's take a look at that in a little bit more detail. So the first part is building the knowledge base. And in this application, we start off with a series of text and PDF documents, which are then imported into Azure, uh, an Azure storage account. Once those documents are imported, we then index them using Azure Cognitive Search to make them searchable. Once your knowledge base is in place, it's time to query it. So when a user submits a question in the UI, the backend handles that request. If the question has been asked before, the backend first looks in the cache. So what this does is it helps providing quicker responses rather than going through the entire process of generating a new response. That takes us to the next part. If the question is new, the knowledge base is queried for the most relevant documents using Azure Cognitive Search. Finally, uh, once we retrieve the set of relevant documents uh, that we want to use as, as context in the prompt that's, uh, that's sent to Azure OpenAI Service, um, Azure OpenAI Service then uses the information from those documents to generate a response. And once there's a response that gets generated, you then just send that back uh, to the front end or to the UI. So with that, uh, let's take a look at some code. So <clears throat> what you're looking at here is the first step of building your knowledge base. And to, to do that, we're essentially using a, a C-sharp console application, uh, which all it does is it takes some data. We have, again, PDF and text documents that are stored locally on our machine. Uh, and then it just uploads them to an Azure storage account and it, it uh, indexes them uh, using Azure uh, Cognitive Search, right? So there's, there's really not a lot of magic happening here. Um, and that's kind of what you're seeing here, that the files are processed, they're indexed, so on and so forth. Um, you can imagine making this better, such as you, this is a background job, it runs on a schedule, it's up in the cloud, but for this case, we just kept it super simple. Now, let's go ahead here and take a look at our application. So you're gonna see here that instead of running uh, this application uh, in a hosted environment, it's running locally here at localhost 7181. And we're gonna take a look at this chat endpoint here. So if we ask a question, what's gonna happen is you're gonna see that uh, it hits our breakpoint in Visual Studio. So what you're looking at here is just, again, that minimal ASP.NET Core Web API. Um, and there's a series of endpoints here, um, but the one that we're interested in is this chat endpoint. And what we're gonna be looking at is how that, when, whenever a request is sent to that endpoint, how that's handled by the on post chat async uh, handler. If we take a look at what that's doing, it's essentially just trying to generate a response. And one of the things that we pass in as information or initial sort of state of context is our history, which as you'll kind of see here, um, there's not much there. It's just our initial question that we submitted in the UI. So let's take a look at what reply async does. I'm gonna give it uh, some time here for it to try to generate an answer. And then we're gonna walk through the different steps and the things that are happening in reply async. So you can see here that now our response has been generated, but let's walk through what's happening in reply async. So the first thing that we're doing is, again, now we have that knowledge base up in Azure uh, Cognitive Search and in Azure Storage, and we're gonna want to query that database, right? Now, one of the challenges is that we are querying Azure Cognitive Search, but we're, we're, we have natural language, right? That's the sort of, the initial question that we're providing. And so Azure Cognitive Search doesn't really know how to take the natural or the question that I asked it and turn that into a query. So what we're gonna be doing here is we're gonna be using AI, uh, the Azure OpenAI service and Semantic Kernel to kind of help us translate our question into a query. Right? And we do that using this create query prompt function. Now, if we take a quick look at what that's doing, 
Um, it essentially just creates a query prompt template, right? So this prompt, uh, these are things that help guide these, uh, these AI models to try to generate a response. And to start off, there's a set of instructions or guidelines that we set um, for the model. We then have some placeholders here like chat history and question. And what these are are just things that you can provide as additional context and information for, for the model. Um, <clears throat> and then ultimately what you want to generate is a search query. So that's basically all that's happening with this create prompt, uh, create query prompt function. Now, if we sort of come back here, you can see that we are setting some of that additional context, right? So we're providing the chat history as additional context. And again, right, that only contains our initial question. And then we also have our initial question as additional information here. Once we set that context, then we've created the prompt that we're going to send to, um, to Azure OpenAI service. You can see that we just uh, run that function using this run async method, um, which calls that semantic kernel function. And what we get back is this uh, query here, Northwind Health Plus Plan, not standard benefit. So you can see how AI has translated our original question into a query. Now this query, we can then use it to submit to Azure Cognitive Search. You can see here that we have this search client and we're querying our documents and we're passing in that generated query um, to help us find the most relevant documents here. Uh, and you're gonna see that as a result of that, the response then just becomes the documents themselves or the information that's contained within those documents more specifically. All right, so we're almost there. Now that we have the documents in place, um, we can then do a similar process like we did when we took our original question and translated it to a search query. Um, except in this case, what we're gonna do is we're gonna provide not only our chat history as context, but we're also going to provide sources, right? So these sources are actually just the documents that we found that are relevant to our question, right? And we're gonna provide those as context to then send to Azure OpenAI service to help us generate our, um, our response or our answer. And then last but not least, you can see that we go through that same process. We use semantic kernel to submit the function with the context, again, those documents and our chat history. And what that does is it goes ahead and it generates a, a response for us. So um, let me kind of just switch back here for a second to the UI. Uh, let me start a new session because it probably timed out by now. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna go through that process again, and we're just gonna run through it a little bit quicker uh, now that you kind of know sort of the details of what's happening here. So, okay, we're gonna let that load and we're gonna ask it a question. So again, we're in that on post chat ASIC handler, which is gonna generate a response for us. We then go in here, give it some time to generate the response for us. And then we'll walk through the process uh, just a little bit more quickly here. Okay, so the response is generated for us. And again, right, we are first, taking our question and we are generating a query that Azure Cognitive Search can understand to retrieve the most relevant documents. Once we have that query, we then use that to query our index and it returns a set of documents with their relevant information. And then we use those documents and leverage Azure OpenAI service and the OpenAI models to generate the response for us, again, using those documents as context. And that generates a response for us, which if I just sort of go through here, you can see that uh, it went ahead and it generated a response for us uh, with the citation here as well. So that brings us to the end of our presentation. Uh, if you're interested in getting started with this application and trying it out with your own data, make sure to check out aka.ms slash .net dash AI dash app. You're gonna be able to start playing with this application, try it out yourself, use it with your own data if you'd like, uh, and just please give us feedback and, and let us know how this works for you.